In this video, I want to talk about the polarity. So it's the last topic in in chapter six. The polarity actually can be divided into two parts. When we are talking about the polarity, sometimes we are talking about the bond. Okay, so we have polarity in bond and sometimes we are talking about the polarity in molecule polarity in molecule so sometimes we say if the bond is polar or not sometimes we say if the molecule is polar or not so these two are completely different concept, concepts from each other let's explain first the polarity in the bond then we would go to determine the polarity in the molecule so suppose you have the hf we have drawn the lewis structure for this molecule it was like this hf and we had lone pair on the fullerene we know that the fullerene is more electronegative than hydrogen so it means it has greater ability to pull these shared electron toward itself so that's why these electron most of the time are around the fullerene and sometimes they are around the hydrogen if we want to show the electron cloud here we can draw the electron cloud like this so we have a huge electron cloud around the fullerene and a small electron cloud around the hydrogen this means that these shared electron most of the times are around the fullerene atom and sometimes they are around the hydrogen that cause the area around the fullerene to become negative and area around the hydrogen to become positive but it the electrons doesn't completely transfer to the fullerene so that's why they are not positive or negative they are partially positive and partially negative so in hf the area around the fullerene is partially negative and area around the hydrogen is partially positive so in this case we say the bond is polar and we have a term here we say we have dipole so what is the dipole when you have separation in the charge you will have the dipole so here you have two charges negative and positive they are opposite but their value are same so in that case we say we have the dipole the definition of the dipole here is given in your book it says a dipole is created by equal but opposite charges that are separated by a short distance the so same thing we have here in hcl because the coloring is more electronegative than hydrogen the coloring becomes partially negative hydrogen becomes partially positive because this shared electron goes toward the coloring coloring has more ability to pull this shared electron toward itself so in this case we say we have the dipole here and we say the bond is polar dipole is usually shown by a vector so if we have hf we know that here is partially positive and here is partially negative to show that it has the dipole we show it by a vector the vector starts from the positive and it goes toward the negative area this is called dipole moment this term is not available in your book but it's good to know that one because we will use this concept later on so the dipole moment is the charge that we have we know that the positive and negative charge are equal so no matter which one you put here times the distance between these two charges so we show the distance from the fullerene to hydrogen or from the positive to a negative charge by d so this is the dipole moment and this is a vector so you know that the vector has magnitude 
and it has at the same time the direction so we said the direction is from positive toward the negative area of the bond and the magnitude depends on the charge and distance so what determines the charge that we have here the difference in electronegativity determines the charge so if you have bigger difference in electronegativity the separate of separation of the charge would be bigger and the dipole moment also would be greater so for example if you want to compare hf and hcl in both of these molecules the hydrogens are less electronegative than the halogen so here fullerene which is more electronegative it becomes partially negative hydrogen becomes partially positive same thing happens in the next molecule hcl chlorine is more electronegative than hydrogen so chlorine becomes partially negative hydrogen becomes partially negative partially positive so we have a polar bond in both of them so here the dipole moment is in this direction here also the dipole moment is in this direction but the dipole moment is bigger here than here because the difference in electronegativity between hydrogen and fullerene is more than difference in electronegativity between hydrogen and chlorine so this is the concept about the polarity of the bond so we say these bonds are polar and to show that they are polar we use the vector which we call it dipole moment so the vector is from positive toward the negative uh, area of the bond now let's talk about the polarity of the molecule suppose we have carbon dioxide co2 we have drawn its lewis structure and its electron and in molecular geometry the CO2 molecule is like this. Okay, we have a lone pair here, but lone pair is not important for us right now. Okay, so look at the bond between the carbon and oxygen at the right side. Oxygen is more electronegative than the carbon. So these electrons go toward the oxygen and the oxygen becomes partially negative, carbon becomes partially positive. So you have a dipole moment here, a polar bond in this direction. What about the carbon and oxygen at the left? Same thing, the oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, so here is partially negative, carbon would be partially positive. So for the bond at the left side, you have a dipole moment to the left. But what about the molecules? These two dipole moments are equal, but they are in opposite direction. You know that when you have a vector in the same magnitude, but in opposite direction, they cancel out each other. So these two polar bonds or these two dipole moments cancel out each other and the molecule becomes nonpolar. So if the dipole moments cancel out each other, the molecule becomes nonpolar. What if the molecule of carbon dioxide was like this? So in that case, we have two dipole moments, one in this direction, the other one in this direction. Now you have two vectors, but these two vectors cannot cancel out each other. If you want to add these two vectors, you have to take this one, put it here. Okay, so the end of the first one match with the beginning of the second vector so the resultant vector is a vector from here to here so this is the resultant vector so if the carbon dioxide was like this the molecule would be polar when we check we can see that the carbon dioxide is non-polar molecule so this is the correct geometry for the molecule this is another approval of the valence shell electron pair repulsion because this theory predicts that the molecule is linear and only when the molecule is linear carbon dioxide becomes non-polar if the molecule was not linear that you can see here the molecule would be polar but in the real world when you check the carbon dioxide you can see that it is non-polar so it approves that your molecule is linear and this is 
and another approval for valence shell electron repulsion theory. Okay, so what do you have here? You have two polar bonds, but the molecule becomes non-polar. So you must be careful what the question asks you. Sometimes they ask you if you have polar bond or not. Sometimes they ask you if your molecule is polar or not. Okay. So the polarity of the bond depends on difference in electronegativity between two atoms. If two identical atoms are connected to each other, like in the fullerene molecule F and F, the electronegativity of these two atoms are equal because they are same atoms. So none of them can drag these shared electron toward itself completely. So that's one, the bond is non-polar here. So you have this situation when you have two identical atoms which are bonded to each other like the oxygen. So in the oxygen, you have only one bond and because two atoms are the same, their electronegativity is same. So the difference in electronegativity is zero. You will not have the separation in charge and the bond become non-polar. But if you have a molecule which has more than one bond, then you have to look about look at the polarity of the bond. And at the same time, you must look at how these dipole moments are arranged, or you must look at the shape of the molecule or geometry of the molecule. For example, we had the molecule BF3. We have drawn the Lewis structure for BF3. It was like this. Trigonal planar molecule. Fullerene is more electronegative than boron. So we have partially negative charge on fullerene and partially positive charge on boron. You have the same situation between the boron and full or the rest of the fullerenes. So you will have three dipole moments here. Okay, so one is in this direction, the other one in this direction the other one in this direction. So you have three polar three polar bonds but the molecule is non-polar. Why the molecule is non-polar? Because these three vectors cancel out each other. If you add this vector and this vector the result is the vector that directly downward and this vector cancels this one. So it means the molecule becomes non-polar. Another example is CCL4. We have drawn the molecular geometry for CCL4. It was like this. Colorines are more electronegative than carbon, so in all of the bonds, the colorines get the partially negative charge and the carbon is partially positive charge. So you have four polar bonds here, but the molecule becomes non-polar because these four vectors cancel out each other. We can show this one here in the graph that we have on this picture let me bring it to you okay so look at what do we have here here is the carbon here is the chlorine 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 and chlorine we have four vectors one this one is coming out of the board this one goes inside and you have one vector here. If you add these three vectors at the bottom, it makes one vector straight downward, which is equal to the vector that you have here. So these two vectors also cancel out each other and your molecule becomes non-polar. So 
having just polar bond doesn't mean that your molecule is polar you have to check the orientation of these bonds and check if these vectors or dipole moments can cancel out each other or not if they can cancel out each other then your molecule would be non-polar if they cannot cancel out each other your molecule becomes polar okay so let's go back to the previous page okay let's have another example okay the NH3 the NH3 was like this nitrogen is more electronegative than hydrogen so it's partially negative here partially positive partially positive partially positive so you will have three vectors the direction of them from hydrogen to nitrogen from hydrogen to nitrogen from hydrogen to nitrogen you can see the shape of them here this is your molecule so you have three dipole moments one is here the other one is here the other one is here these three vectors cannot cancel out each other and if you add these three vectors you will get resultant vectors like this so the molecule remains polar so in NH3 the molecule is polar okay let's go back and let's have another example here suppose you have this molecule C double bond O double bond S okay you have two long pairs here okay the bond between the carbon and oxygen is polar carbon is less electronegative so it becomes partially positive oxygen becomes partially negative and the polarity of the bond would be in this direction about carbon and sulfur uh, the sulfur is more electronegative than carbon so this one is partially negative carbon is partially positive and the bond would be like this okay so but this one the polarity of the bond is more than here so although you have two vectors in opposite direction they cannot cancel out each other so the molecule is polar another example suppose you have HCN nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon so the nitrogen is partially negative carbon is partially positive and the dipole moment is in this direction but if you look at the bond between the hydrogen and carbon carbon is more electronegative than hydrogen so the carbon is partially negative hydrogen is partially positive and the dipole moment would be in this direction so you have two vectors if you add these two vectors you got this one so the molecule is polar in this situation so this is the concept of the polarity and it's very important to know if your molecule is polar or not one of the <clears throat> important examples especially in the biology is the water molecule you know that the water molecule is bent and the oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen so the oxygen is partially negative hydrogen would be partially positive so it means you have two dipole moment or two polar bonds one in this direction the other one in this direction if you add these two vectors you get a vector like this so it means the water molecule is a polar molecule what the polar molecule says it means this area around the hydrogens are positive and the area around the oxygen is negative for water molecule but what if the water molecule was linear we know that the water molecule is bent or v-shaped but suppose the water molecule was linear it was like this so how is the polarity for this arrangement of the uh, bonds okay so you have partially negative here partially positive on the hydrogens 
So these would be two dipole moments for these bonds. These two dipole moments cancel out each other and the molecule becomes non-polar. We know that this arrangement is wrong because when we check the water molecule is polar. So that's why it's important to know what is the geometry of the molecule or how the atoms or how the bonds are orientated relative to each other. So look at the water molecule. If they have bent, if it has bent structure, the molecule would be polar. If it becomes linear, like what I have drawn here, the molecule would become non-polar. And we know based on the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory that this is the correct arrangement or geometry for the water molecule. So this one is wrong. So that's why water molecule is polar. So you can see in this chapter, the concepts are related to each other. So if you want to determine whether your molecule is polar or not, you must know the electronegativity and the molecular geometry or shape of the molecule, how the bonds are, relate, are orientated relative to each other. For determining that, you must know the valence shell electron, rep, electron pair repulsion. For determining the shape of the molecule, you must know how to draw the Lewis structure to determine the domains of the molecule. So all of them are important. You must know how to draw the Lewis structure and you must know how to determine the molecular geometry. And also, finally, you can determine if your molecule is polar or not based on the molecular geometry. Okay, now let's go back and determine the polarity of the molecules that we have drawn Lewis structure of them. So I go back to determine if these molecules that we have drawn in the class are polar or not. So we want to find the polarity of the molecules. So the first molecule is CH4. Carbon is more electronegative than hydrogen. So the carbon is partially negative. Hydrogens are partially positive. So the dipole moments would be like this. So you have, okay, it's better to show it by another color. So you have four polar bonds, but these four polar bonds cancel out each other. So your molecule becomes non-polar. NH3, we have shown that NH3 is polar molecule. So I won't repeat that one. You have three polar bonds in this direction and these three vectors cannot cancel out each other. So actually when you have trigonal pyramidal arrangement and you have polar bonds, they cannot cancel out each other. So your molecule would be polar. Water molecule, because the water molecule is bent, on oxygen you have partially negative, on hydrogen you have partially positive, so you have one dipole moment in this direction, one dipole moment in this direction, they cannot cancel out each other, so your molecule becomes polar. Again, when your molecule is bent or V-shaped and you have polar bond, they cannot cancel out each other, so your molecule becomes polar. Okay, the next example is H2CO. This is the molecular shape or molecular geometry for that. If we look at the bond between the hydrogen and carbon, carbon is more electronegative than hydrogen. So the bond between them becomes polar and the dipole moments are in this direction. If you look at the bond between the carbon and oxygen, the oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. So this is partially negative, carbon would be partially positive, and you have one vector in this direction. So you can see these vectors, three vectors cannot cancel out each other, so your molecule becomes polar. Okay, for HCN, we have shown that you have one dipole moment in this direction, the next one in this direction, so your molecule becomes polar. 
for linear molecule if you have two polar bonds in opposite direction they can cancel out each other and molecule becomes non-polar but if the two dipole moments are in the same direction or if two dipole moments are not equal they cannot cancel out each other so your molecule remains polar okay now let's go to the next molecule ch3i so the bond between the hydrogen and carbons are polar carbon is more electronegative so the carbon is partially negative hydrogen becomes partially positive so you have three dipole moments in this direction here the bond between the carbon and iodine iodine is more electronegative than carbon so iodine becomes partially negative carbon becomes partially positive and you will have a dipole moment or polar bond in this direction we can see in this case these four dipole moments cannot cancel out each other and your molecule becomes polar co2 we have shown that we have two polar bonds but in opposite direction so the molecule becomes non-polar of2 fluorine is more electronegative than oxygen so fluorine is partially negative oxygen is partially positive you have a dipole moment in this direction and dipole moment in this direction these two cannot cancel out each other so your molecule is polar nh3 nh4 plus so nh4 plus is iron so we don't have polarity for the ions because they are positive Okay. so we don't have positive and negative area to say if the molecule is polar or not but look at the OF2 the previous example this area of the molecule is partially positive this area of the molecule is partially negative you have separation of the charge so the molecule is polar but here the whole structure has positive charge so we have the ion so the polarity is only for the molecules if you have the ion we don't determine the polarity for that because they don't have the dipole moment okay the next one is also ion this one is ion okay or if we want to more precise this one is an ion okay SO3 so oxygen is more electronegative than sulfur so the bonds here are polar the polarity is toward oxygen so we have three dipole moments or three polar bonds as I said in trigonal pyramidal arrangement these dipole moments cannot cancel out each other so the molecule becomes polar bf3 as i explained you have three vectors in this direction they cancel out each other so the molecule becomes non-polar becl2 it's the linear molecule chlorine is more electronegative than beryllium so beryllium is partially positive chlorines are partially negative so you have one dipole moment in this direction another dipole moment in this direction these two cancel out each other so the molecule becomes non-polar SO2 so you can see the SO2 molecule here oxygen is more electronegative than sulfur so you have one vector in this direction one vector in this direction they are partially positive and oxygen are partially negative so these two vectors cannot cancel out each other if you add these two vectors you get a vector like this so the molecule is polar okay so3 so3 you have three polar bonds the oxygens are more electronegative than sulfur so the oxygen are partially negative sulfur is partially positive you will have three dipole moments or three polar bonds but these three bonds cancel out each other so the molecule becomes non-polar NO2 minus is anion okay so here we have forgot to put it inside the bracket don't forget to put them inside the bracket 
O N C L. So in O N C L, you have the bond between nitrogen and chlorine, between nitrogen and oxygen. Oxygen is more electronegative, so in this direction. The electronegative of nitrogen and chlorine is almost same, but whatever the electronegativity difference between them, it cannot cancel this one. So the molecule is polar. Okay, SiCl4. Chlorine is more electronegative than silicon. So you have negative area around the chlorine and silicon becomes positive. So you have one dipole moment in this direction another dipole moment in this direction in this direction and this is this direction these four dipole moments cancel out each other and the molecule becomes non-polar SCL2 chlorines are more electronegative than sulfur so you have one dipole moment in this direction another dipole moment in this direction and in the bent or v shape arrangement when you have the polar bond they cannot cancel out each other so your molecule is polar pi3 iodine is more electronegative than phosphorus so you have three dipole moments like this they cannot cancel out each other so the molecule remains polar okay nh2cl obviously it has trigonal pyramidal arrangement and the molecule would be polar cl2o it's the bent molecule oxygen is more electronegative than chlorine so here is partially negative partially positive partially positive have one dipole moment in this direction one dipole moment in this direction these two cannot cancel out each other if you add these two vectors you get a vector like this so the molecule is polar pcl5 trigonal bipyramidal in trigonal bipyramidal you the chlorine is more electronegative than phosphorus so around the chlorine you have partially negative and around the phosphorus you have partially positive area okay you have three dipole moments here like this these three dipole moments completely cancel out each other it's like trigonal planner so you have one in this direction one in this direction one in this direction they cancel out each other so these three cancel out each other okay so so this one this one and this one cancel out each other also you have one dipole moment to the above it one dipole moment blow it downward upward and downward and these two also can cancel out each other so the molecule becomes non-polar okay. I can show this one on this image that we had here okay this one so you have one polar bond in this direction another one in this direction and another one here these three cancel out each other completely and you have one dipole moment upward one dipole moment downward these two also cancel out each other so your molecule becomes non-polar okay so let's go back to the next molecule that we had the next molecule is sf6 sulfur hexafluoride Again, fullerenes are more electronegative than sulfur, so the bonds between the sulfur and fullerenes are polar, and the direction is from sulfur to fullerene. You have six polar bonds here, okay, one in this direction, the other one in this direction, like this, like this. Okay, this is on the plane, so you have actually one in this direction, the other one in this direction this direction and in this direction all vectors are equal so these four cancel out each other so the dipole moments on the plane cancel out each other you have one dipole moment downward one dipole moment upward these two also cancel out each other so the molecule becomes non-polar so polarity of the molecule is non-polar I can show you on this picture I think it would be more clear so you have one vector here this vector is cancelled by this one 
we have one vector here this vector is cancelled by this one because they are equal and in opposite direction you have one vector here this one is cancelled by this one so all of the vectors cancel out each other and the molecule becomes non-polar 